Hey, what's up guys? It's uh, Matt Modi with Hodge Jam, and what we're going to do in this video, I got an NBA player prop for uh, Game 6 of the NBA Finals that I think is really good. Um, finally had a lot of success, or not a lot, it was just one pick, but at least had some success with my player prop uh, in the last game, in Game 5. Uh, I took Andrew Wiggins to go over 17.5 points. That one hit with ease, as Andrew Wiggins was awesome. The thing that was a little bit frustrating was that it was supposed to be a three-unit play. It was supposed to be $75, bucks, uh, so it would have been about $71 in profit. Uh, because I'm limited on point spent, I was only able to get $52.50, so only $50 in profit. So obviously, didn't quite make up for the almost $600 in loss that I have for these player props. But was nice to get a win in the books. So I have another one. Uh, for game six that I think is awesome. Uh, I did do some research into this one, so I like it both for basketball and for math reasons. Um, I'll start with math reasons. So this was a bet that obviously I found using the Odds Jam positive expected value page. Uh, this page is where any opportunity um, has mathematically profitable value associated with it. The way it works, of course, is this Odds Jam line here is pulled from the most accurate bookmaker in the world. Uh, these are going to be the most efficient betting lines and anywhere in which we're getting more favorable odds on another book, it's gonna have positive expected value associated with it. So for this bet specifically, I am looking at Robert Williams to go over eight and a half rebounds. That is my player prop pick for this one. Um, the odds jam line prices this at minus 107. As you can see here, uh, the other side of it is priced at minus 123. So you add those two numbers, gives you a market width of 30. Uh, market width is essentially a way to just measure confidence in the line. Uh, the more confident that the OGM line is in what they're pricing it, the lower the number of the market width is going to be. Uh, anything that is below 40 cents is within range for an NBA player prop, which this one obviously being at 30 is within range. Now, the next thing I like to look at is this column here, the no VIG odds. Um, so the VIG is essentially a tax, quote unquote, that sportsbooks price up odds themselves. Uh, it's the way they guarantee that they're profitable. What sportsbooks don't do is charge a transaction fee. So you can place as many bets as you want on any sportsbook without getting charged, right? The way the sportsbooks make their money is essentially on the VIG. It's the hold they have of the market. So in order to understand uh, what the odds jam line truly prices this market at, you need to remove the VIG. Now, odds jam has a calculator that does that. You just go to no VIG fair odds calculator. Luckily, the positive EV page displays what the no VIG odds are, which is awesome. Uh, another thing that I find incredibly interesting is the no VIG odds have a uh, win percentage associated with them. Uh, so whenever sports books price odds, all that they're doing essentially is they're associating a win probability of that specific bet. Um, and you can you can convert odds into a win probability. Uh, if you click this calculator, essentially this bet has a 48.38% chance of winning. Now the plus 115 odds have a lower inherent win percentage of that. So we're betting on something that has that probability gap in terms of win percentage, which is, which is another way to say that this bet has positive expected value. Now, this 4% here can essentially be viewed as your profit margin. Um, this, so this bet essentially has a 4% profit margin. So every $100 placed on this Robert Williams over eight and a half rebounds, you can essentially expect to make $4 over time. Um, so another thing that I like to do before I decide whether I should place a bet or not is just look into the markets and see where everything's pricing this at. Now, this one specifically, the OGM line has it at minus 107. Um, the closest the other another book has is Bet Rivers at plus 105 and FanDuel at plus 108. No book has this for minus money, but no book also has this above plus 110. So this plus 115 is a little bit of an outlier. Now, it's not the um, you know, the perfect outlier that we're looking for, but I still, it's still enough of a discrepancy that makes me comfortable with it. Uh, and then for math reasons, and excuse me, for the actual basketball reasons, Robert Williams is quietly becoming one of the most important defenders for 
um, for the Celtics. He guards the Steph Curry high pick and roll better than any of their other big men. And even if he's dropped a little bit more than you would expect, Steph Curry is still hesitant to shoot on those pick and rolls. So he's also uh, one of their more physical rebounders. And he also probably has the highest um, uh, vertical in terms of jump of the entire, honestly, of, of probably of the entire finals, except for maybe Wiggins, but he's also 6'9 with a 7 foot 6 wingspan. So he has a ton of uh, height and length on Wiggins. And um, if you just look at his stats, so he was, he's had a lot of knee troubles pretty much these entire playoffs. So there's about, uh, I mean, a three week span where he didn't play over, looks like the highest minute total was 27. But in the past three games, he's played 26, 31, and 30 minutes, and he's had 10, 12, and eight rebounds. So he didn't hit this in his last game, but he had exactly eight. So that's close enough to me where it's not a necessarily a negative trend. And I think because of how important he is on the glass, offensive glass especially, and on defense, I think they're going to try and have him play as many minutes as possible. Now, the scary thing with Williams is you never know how his knee is going to respond, but he's quietly becoming one of the most important players on the Celtics on the defensive end. Um, so I think that he's at minimum going to get 30 minutes. And if he's going to get 30 minutes, he's going to hover around that eight and a half rebound mark. My projections have him going over eight and a half. So I do think this one is a really good bet. So I'm going to go ahead, log in the DraftKings, and I'm going to lock this one in. So here I have it, Robert Williams over eight and a half rebounds plus 115 odds that you can see here on DraftKings. This is going to be another three unit play for me. Uh, normally I would put a hundred dollar McSlam on this one, but because of the bad luck I've had with player props, I'm not going to go ahead and quite put that much money on here. So $75 on this bet. I think it's a really good bet. I would definitely recommend tailing it. Uh, so place bet. So I'm good to go there. Now I just need to add this to my bet tracker and I can scurry on out of here. So click this plus button. Make sure you add it to the correct side. I put 75 bucks on this one and now it's added to my bet tracker. Um, so, so I know that if the bet wins, it'll go into my total profit and loss which you can see on the screen here on my dashboard. So all of this information comes from the bet tracker. It's a really awesome, really helpful tool. It's also free to use, so I definitely recommend checking out the bet tracker. But anyways, that's all I got for you for this video. Uh, if you're tailing, I would love to hear it. Uh, comment on the video, let me know you're tailing. Other than that, would appreciate if you could like it and then of course subscribe to the IGM YouTube channel. But that is all I got for you. So happy betting, happy watching, and good luck.